The World Health Organization, WHO, has confirmed 768,000 COVID-19 cases in Africa as 435,000 persons have recovered while 16,000 deaths were recorded. This was made known by WHO as at Friday, 24th July. The statement says that health workers face risk from COVID-19 and efforts are intensifying to stop the infection. Many hide their illnesses, refuse to share their contacts, do not seek medical care or follow preventive measures out of fear of being stigmatized. Fear within communities slows down rising coronavirus with response teams in Ouagadougou, Burkina Faso. Dr. Mary Stephen, the technical officer at the WHO Regional Office for Africa, joins us now via Zoom. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me and good afternoon. Good afternoon. A quick check at the rising cases of coronavirus in Africa is over 700,000. What is the WHO doing to mitigate this continuing spread? So um, we are looking at the situation, assessing it from the regional office level, looking at the different countries. So basically more than 70% of these cases you are seeing are reported from uh, about 10 countries in the region. So we are ramping up support, especially to these 10 countries. So our support is in terms of, uh, we provide guidance technically to all countries, and we also deploy additional human resource experts as such to support countries that have a high number of cases. We are also supporting with logistics, so providing uh, PPEs, uh, the issues of uh, ventilators, oxygen concentrators. So, so this is what we are doing. And uh, of course, we have all our country offices in, in, in different countries in Africa that are involved in the response together with the government as well. We know that South Africa is one of the worst hit countries here. Nigeria is also among the worst hit by the coronavirus. Um, how is the WHO rendering specific assistance to these countries at this time? Yes, so for these countries uh, with highest number of cases, like I said earlier, we have prioritized these countries. For South Africa especially, um, just coming next week, we are going to send them additional experts that will be there on the field at the hotspots to support uh, with the response. So we are sending them about 42 experts to South Africa. And we plan to send additional surge to uh, all the different countries, I mean the 10 high priority countries. We are also providing additional uh, logistic support in terms of uh, the issues of uh, PPEs and other logistic supplies uh, to these uh, uh, countries, including, of course, additional laboratory reagents to the high countries with a uh, high number of cases. So, so we continue to provide guidance as well, looking at uh, the areas, helping them to understand the situation better and addressing the challenges. Let's talk vaccine now. We know that there is um, efforts across the globe to find a vaccine uh, or some sort of cure for the virus. Um, where are we in Africa um, and what is, um, where are we? Can we uh, join in this quest? Yes, so uh, from the beginning, research in Africa uh, in terms of uh, the search of the vaccine was a little bit uh, limited, but now increasingly, countries in Africa are, are, are getting involved in, in the search for vaccine, including the clinical trials. Uh, South Africa, for instance, is involved in, in, in the trials uh, with uh, the Oxford uh, University for this uh, recently announced vaccine. And we are seeing more involvement of uh, African countries now in, in terms of uh, the search for the vaccine and clinical trials of uh, 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 existing vaccine. Okay, what is uh, the WHO doing to um, encourage um, more dissemination of information? Because we know that there are still some people who doubt that there is indeed a virus, and they're just saying it's a hoax um, that the Western world has brought in uh, to the African continent. Um, how is the WHO working to dispel this? 
Yes, so we, we are ramping up uh, the risk communication efforts across the continent, helping people to understand uh, what this COVID-19 is all about, uh, the transmission, the risks for contracting the virus, the preventive measures. So from the regional level, we provide information on all social media platforms. We provide information and guidance support to countries as well. And at country level, countries are also making sure they are engaging the communities to help them understand uh, the risks for COVID and that COVID is real in Africa and people need to take uh, personal responsibility to protect themselves from being exposed to the virus. Okay, I, I must ask you this. I don't know if it is within your purview, but um, it is a worrying uh, development. Uh, doctors, especially in Nigeria, are embarking on strike. Now that your services um, is most needed, um, have complaints been brought before the WHO? And how is the WHO working with governments to you know, ensure that these doctors get all they need, including their uh, various allowances? Okay, so, so now the issue of uh, allowance and strike uh, is, is country specific and limited to government, uh, but our effort is to make sure that uh, the health workers are protected. So we have a lot of health worker infection in Africa. We have more than 10,000 uh, health workers that have been infected with COVID. And uh, the goal is to make sure that these health workers, first of all, they have the personal protective equipment they require. In the hospital, they have the knowledge. So part of the things that we do in support of countries, we also conduct trainings. So we, are, we have run a lot of uh, virtual trainings, even from the regional level for health workers uh, to reduce these risks of infection. And we are prioritizing them for support, ensuring that government is that uh, they are not allowing the health workers to work excess time or breaking the time to avoid exposing them to making mistakes and then contaminating themselves with the PPEs. So, so making sure that uh, they are in a good place uh, where infection does not spread among health workers. But the issue of payment and uh, the issue of strike is, is actually up to government to national governments. All right, Dr. Mary Stephen, thank you very much for talking with us. Thank you.